Un Academy. Let's crack it. Hi everyone. My name is Preeksha and I'm a fifth year law student at the National Law University Delhi. I have teamed up with Un Academy CLAT to talk about my ALIT and CLAT preparation strategy. What I think are things that you could do to help get better ranks and therefore better colleges in the entrance exams. So, um, for the starters, brief information uh, about me. Uh, I took ALIT and CLAT in the year 2017. Back then, the pattern was slightly different from what it is now. But I've come to realize that even though the patterns have changed slightly, uh, the the syllabus and the preparation strategies more or less have stayed the same. So whatever I tell, um, I'll tell from my experiences, but also at the same time, I'll try to incorporate them with, you know, the pandemic and how you can work through the COVID situation. And if in case your ALIT and CLAT both happen online compared to how we had an offline ALIT and an online CLAT. So um, first of all, let's start with the basics. Let's start with English. So um, English is, I believe, the trickiest subject because even though they mark it only a certain percentage in the entire cell, in the entire paper, um, even the law questions and the legal reasoning questions cannot be fully answered or even understood if you don't have a good knowledge of English. So English is fortunately or unfortunately the most fundamental aspect of either of these exams and more if you take MSCET or some other exams as well. So um, first and foremost English. So for English, um, I've come to realize that language is not something that you can learn overnight or like, you know, in a few days or something. So whenever you start preparing for your exams or whenever you see this video, um, I would recommend that you start preparing for English right away. The best way to prepare, obviously, is to read newspapers. So uh, you don't have to go with some newspaper that you don't understand like or you would find trouble understanding like the Hindu. You could stick with um, Times of India or Indian Express or whatever is available for you. Uh, yeah, that is the most important aspect. Just read one English newspaper. That would not only help you with English but also with um, GK. So um, that's the most fundamental aspect. Um, in the in, in the newspaper, you're not supposed to uh, just like basically read the entire newspaper. I would say read the editorial first and then certain news pieces that you think might be relevant. These are the most important things um, and you know when you're reading the newspaper you can if you don't know the meaning of a word I would you know say that you look the meaning up right away instead of just you know assuming what the meaning might be because I remember in our times they used to have certain questions which were you know uh, they would give us some word that we might not know and we were supposed to have find a synonym or an antonym of that word which is not possible unless you know you know more meanings of words. So first and foremost thing of course is English, newspapers and uh, uh, that will also help you with GK. And then what you can do is for English, um, if you have free time, of course this is not something completely mandatory. I did not do it consciously myself but if you enjoy reading for example, um, you can take up a few books and you can read them, you know, you can develop a habit of reading for 30 minutes or an hour every day. If your exams are going to be online. You can also try reading it on a screen because um, the screen reading speed of people is usually slightly lower than the paper reading speed. So if you really want to immerse yourself in the experience and you want to prepare thoroughly for you know what you would experience in those one and a half or two hours, you can read on a screen so that that would give you a much enhanced experience of what the exam is like and what reading on a screen would be like. Right? You can also time yourself you know based on. Um, okay, I'll read this much, these many pages for 30 minutes or something like that and that can also help you. This is for English and of course, you know, um, you will find a lot of questions online or classes on an academy CLAT where you can, you know, understand uh, fundamental principles for grammar or comprehension or the type of questions they ask and how they break them down into um, categories and how you can prepare for every single category that usually comes in these examinations in English. Okay, this is English. Then let's come to maths. Um, so for me, I was a science student, PCM. So maths was actually fun for me. I liked maths even before that. Uh, so what I did, and I think that really helps gently also, is to finish up maths uh, early on. And I say it simply because maths is relatively a smaller um, subject. It weighs less. So you know, if you're someone from maths background or if you like maths, 
you can just you know put in a, uh, a like if you have a few months in fact if you have six eight months at least you can finish up maths you can do it uh, two three hours every day initially in the first few weeks or months and that will really help you you know gain confidence in the 20 marks that you have or 15 marks you have whatever how, whatever the division is um, for maths so you know every day you can pick up different activities under different um, types of questions that they ask and you solve all, this, all of those questions and what you can do eventually is that once you're done with the syllabus like the first study of the syllabus you can eventually move on to you know um, solving a few questions every day that way you'll always be revising maths and those uh, the, the marks uh, for maths in the question papers would be secure for yourself um, then uh, similar is something that I recommend for logical reasoning as well uh, so logical reasoning is actually a very interesting thing because you never know the kind of questions they can ask there are of course some type of questions that are standard and that they have used over the years but uh, it's never fixed so what you can do is there are like you know if you go through old pre uh, previous year papers and this is something I recommend for any exam that you take any time you should always 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 look at previous year papers because they really give you an insight into the type of questions they ask and how you can prepare for the exam so I would recommend that you go through previous year question papers or buy some book in the market that you feel is good for logical reasoning and then you look at the type of questions they've asked and you prepare for them so you know there will be certain assertion reason questions there will be certain uh, position questions and time and all of those questions and you can just prepare for them beforehand there will be a few questions of course that might be new or that might be different while you take the exam and that's fine logical reasoning is something is a skill that you can actually develop over time so if you you know dedicate a few minutes of your day every day to a variety of questions of logical reasoning I believe it will really help you in the exam when it comes uh, then let's go for legal reasoning okay legal reasoning is a, a very interesting subject when it comes to CLAT, ELIT or any other law entrance examinations because you've actually never been in law school so you don't know what um, law is supposed to be and you, usually I've seen people get really confused in those questions as well and that's completely fine so uh, what really works in legal uh, reasoning is also something that works with you know any other subject look at previous year questions first and foremost you know you'll see a variety of questions there will be some fact and principle questions there will be some legal maxim questions some uh, very fundamental questions about what case was this or what case was that and you will realize that there are some, there are four or five sub categories of questions that are usually asked in uh, both these exams, CLAT and ALIR, for legal reasoning. So what you can do is focus on one subsection at a time, especially the ones that are static in the sense that you know these are just meanings of certain words, or certain terms, or um, they are some types of you know writs. What are the types of writs or something? Some legal maxims that there exist. You can just you know read them in the initial period of your preparation and you can continue revising them because these things won't change at all so it's much easier for you to just read them once and then revise them every two three days and your memory will be refreshed um, for other questions for principal fact questions and application based questions the most uh, something that i was always told was you know you just follow the principle and you you know you keep your mind on the side and you just read the principle the principle is the most fundamental thing for you and you just apply it on the facts of course things change with time so of course there will be some questions that will be much easier to answer some questions will be intentionally you know complicated and that's completely fine you just have to practice and you will get hang of you know how to you know uh, would rely on the principle and principle alone uh, then we come to GK. Uh, personally, GK was the most difficult uh, subject for me in all these, and that was simply because I didn't uh, get to prepare the entire year. So, um, which is why I prepared all the other subjects first, and I did GK a little bit every day. But in the last few days before my exam, GK was the only thing I did. So, for GK, like I mentioned before, um, the best thing to do is read the newspaper because everything you get, you get there. Um, something that I've realized is actually quite fun is to watch a few YouTube videos online. There are quite a lot of channels that either share day-to-day -day news or that um, explain certain topic 
was of relevance. And it's really interesting to actually just watch those videos, understand those things, and they can actually help you with your GK questions as well. Um, ultimately, though, GK is just a matter of, you know, do you know, were you able to, you know, know more about the things that happened in the last one year? And nobody knows everything, so it's fine. Um, but something that I've realized is that if some incident, most of the GK questions that they ask are not abstract out of the blue. A lot of them are related to news that happened in the last one year. They, they might not ask um, the exact news, but if, for example, a new CJI was appointed, right? You can read up about the previous CJIs and something interesting that might have happened in their tenures or something. Because even if they don't ask about the latest CGI, CGI, there is a chance that they might ask related questions from a current piece of news. So, which is why GK is actually something that takes up a lot of time to prepare. And which is why it makes, personally, it made a lot of sense for me to touch base with all other subjects first and then um, but completely and solely dedicate myself and all of my time and energy to GK. So um, that is something you can do as well. Um, ultimately though, I think the most fundamental three principles of um, any exam preparation to be fair and for CLAT and ALIT are first, um, just know the syllabus, look at the previous year papers and identify what kind of questions they ask and how, what you're supposed to study, right? Second is of course, you know, you consistently work hard, even if you're not working, I'm not asking you to spend 10 hours every day on your, uh, on your studies, right? Just being consistent, giving every subject a certain amount of time every day or, you know, total amount of time per week is a good strategy to go about it. And third is mocks. Uh, no number of mocks is actually less or too many, so just, you know, just how just find mocks online or you can sign up for a few uh, mock tests or sub-sectional tests for different coachings or with an academy and uh, you can just you know every time you do some subject you can solve a few questions you can solve a few online of course and you can also solve a few questions online on their um, on some website or some sort so that you can get your ranking on that you can get marked on that as well and you also get time so um, Solving mocks, solving questions in general, practice is the most fundamental aspect of any preparation and especially of CLAT and ALIT. So just give a lot of mocks, time yourself, mark yourself. And uh, always, you know, the thing, something that I've realized that a lot of people don't do is that when you give a mock um, and you get certain questions wrong or you get certain guesses right, always go back to them and revise those questions. because. There are always a few questions that come up from the mocks that you've given in the past and it's really disappointing to you know see a question and to know that you solved it or you didn't solve it but you have seen it before and to not know the answer for that. So just go back and you know every time you take a, uh, take a test or any mock that you give, re revisit it, revise it. If not all sections at least you know maths, logical, reasoning and uh, legal reasoning, GK, all of them. Because they really give you an insight into where you went wrong and is it important and you just revise it and that really helps as well. So um, three things, look at previous year papers, know what you have to study. Second, just put in efforts, you know, even if you're not putting in a lot of effort, efforts every day, half an hour per subject, one hour per subject, however much you can, you know, just give that much to every subject. And uh, third, solve mocks. Make it a rule to solve a few mocks per month. If not, you know, entire flat and ELF mocks, just maybe sectional mocks for whatever section that you've completed and that would really help. Um, yeah, that's me, Teksha Sharma from National University Delhi. Thank you so much for listening to me. All the best. Bye-bye.